At Ukara Beach, life runs its course. While children play in a sunset hour, fishermen prepare for a long night's work at sea. As the last rays of sunlight fade away, the small island in Lake Victoria is immersed into darkness. My name is Gerald. I'm just a fisherman. We'll purchase those small torches that we can charge. We can use those torches instead of using the lamps that are using kerosene and therefore we'll have saved some little amount. Electricity has become an integral part of life in modern societies. It is hard to imagine a world with no light switches, no sockets to plug in your computer, or having to walk 30 kilometers to charge your mobile. But the fact is that one in five people in the world have no access to electricity. It is no surprise that most of these people live in developing countries. Imagine being 90 years old and going to bed at night with just a burning wooden log as your light source. My mother-in-law is fairly young and she's above 90. Now 90 in darkness is, is simply bad. And come in the bedroom with some burning wood. She could easily burn in the bed. Lack of electricity also hurts productivity, threatens food security and complicates poverty alleviation. On the island of Ikara in Tanzania, the majority of the population make a living as fishermen or related activities. But because they cannot refrigerate or deep freeze the catch of the day, these fishermen end up having to drop the price and remain stuck in poverty. So without uh, the freezers, once you have the catch, it will force you to sell all the fish at once, uh, even if the price is low, to avoid the fish to actually go, uh, go rotten. The good news is that there are good and sustainable solutions for Africa's electricity problem. The answer is right above our heads and is free, renewable and clean in stark contrast to expensive and polluting kerosene and diesel. Africa's abundance of sunshine and ever-increasing population are the key to a rapidly growing market for solar power on the continent. Sales of certified solar lamps and home solar systems are doubled every year. For Joseph's family in Akuru, Kenya, the solution was a home solar system from the Norwegian company Brightalight. We have a solar panel, which is giving us all that much power. Enough for our light, enough for kids to do their homework, of course enough for security. We recharge our phones and of course we have the television. Vast distances and low population density make it extremely costly to expand the central grids in African countries south of the Sahara. Fortunately, prices for solar power are sharply declining and that creates a huge potential for decentralized energy solutions. In April 2016, a company called Jumeme Rural Power Supply opened a solar-based mini-grid on a secluded island, Ukara, in Lake Victoria in northern Tanzania. In Tanzania, we are identifying various areas where the grid is not there yet, where the grid cannot reach there within 10 years to come. Clean energy for all is one of the UN sustainability goals and is at the center of virtually all global challenges we face today. Climate change, population growth and the expected economic growth in developing countries all contribute to the urgency of going all out for clean renewable energy. The Paris Climate Agreement has been ratified in turbo speed currently by 114 countries. This sends a powerful message that the energy transition the world desperately needs will accelerate. There are good possibilities for Africa to leapfrog expensive and polluting technologies from the fossil era and embrace state-of-the-art renewable energy technology which uses the sun as pillar. In the next four episodes, you will get an insight into how solar energy triggers new economic opportunities, fosters entrepreneurship, improves agricultural practices. Not only that, it also provides better education and health services. In African countries, 600 million people have no access to the central grid. Homemade kerosene lamps and open fires are often the only sources of energy. The indoor pollution from these sources ranks among the worst health risks facing the poor. In this episode, we will witness how solar technologies set off a wide variety of solar products to choose from. 
create new jobs and provide a breeding ground for entrepreneurship. The German company Solar Kiosk is a demonstration of how green energy can transform people's lives on the African countryside. To have a solar kiosk in the community is a good demo to the people. Like a solar kiosk is powered by panels. Inside the kiosk there is a TV, there is phone charging, there is photocopy. So it's bringing confidence to the customers to see how much solar energy can do to their life. For Maasai people in Talek, a simple solar lamp costing around $8 means the difference of a life in the dark and one with hope, opportunities and freedom. For many people, $8 is still a lot of money, but the savings they will make in comparison to buying kerosene make it clear that buying a solar lamp is a good investment. <laughs> Declining costs on solar technology have made solar energy a winner on the African countryside. Recently, the Umeme Rural Power Supply installed a solar-based mini-grid on the remote island of Ikara in Lake Victoria. Access to energy has aroused entrepreneurial spirit among the population. Residents can now enjoy entertainment such as movies and popcorn, as well as choose from a variety of solar commodities. For store owner Jackson, the revenues have gone up by 70%. I could charge three phones a day, but since uh, Jumeme came up, I can now charge more than 30 mobile phones in a day. Meanwhile, the price of charging mobiles dropped sharply, which customers really appreciate. Uh, before the Jumeme came up, we were charging the phones at high price. It was 500 shillings, but right now we are charging it at 300 shillings. There are also other properties that we can buy here, like the radios, uh, solar panels. We are happy that we've got them here because it will have forced us to go up to Mwanza or Ukerewe. A little further up the street, William Charles has revived his grain mill business. Polluting an expensive diesel has been replaced with clean, renewable solar energy. Since I started using the Jumeme Rural Electric Supply, it has uh, raised a lot in my income. It has opened ways for me. I've just uh, opened a kiosk. It, actually, I'm looking for an employee who will be here to assist me. Lower costs of electricity also mean that William has been able to lower his price tag by 30%. I'm getting a lot of customers. The Jumeme has really changed my life. In Kitonyoni, Kenya, the establishment of a solar-based mini-grid has transformed the old sleepy village center into a vibrant meeting point with flourishing businesses. The village, when we came in here, was almost dying. Now the village is booming. The number of buildings have doubled. There are about 20 or 30 businesses that came up as part of that expansion. Life has been turned upside down for Daniel Molay since he left yeah. Nairobi and you started a barber shop in Kitonyoni. Without it is, it is not encouraging, but with this electricity, it is very good. It has improved my living standards. I built a house of forums, a married wife. Because of this business, I was able to marry. Access to electricity in the village has also benefited women. Before, Beatrice Vamenga was sitting at home. Now, she runs a hairstyling saloon and dreams of one day running a large beauty parlor. It has improved the woman's life. For example, mine, I think it has improved. Because when there was no electricity, I used to stay at home. But now there is electricity, I work. Sometimes I could have no money to buy, to pay school fees for my kids. Now I use the electricity to blow dry the air, and then I get money. I feel good because I don't have the stress now. Where do I get the money? I feel happy. Mm. Most of people in Kenya have never used the, the electricity. They are still in darkness. And what they wake up to one morning and see, it's electricity. They don't think about anything else. It's all about electricity. So bringing solar energy as a solution to them, it's, it was a big impact to the people. You have to understand the Kenyan culture. You have to understand the people level of income so that you know how to engage them because the people that you are dealing with, they are so sensitive to price. They want to buy cheap and they want to buy quality. We saw our company have invested in training people and then helping them to plan their budget. I think those are the key things that your business will succeed.
The majority of the population in East Africa have their livelihood in the agricultural sector. Nevertheless, a large proportion of the population live in chronic hunger and malnutrition. The enormous subsistence agriculture, inefficient production and lack of irrigation. Meanwhile, climate change has led to more unpredictable weather and recurring droughts, affecting rain-dependent farmers and threatening food security. Rain has become an enemy, an enemy of the farmer. Sometimes it starts raining and then before the crops are harvested, it has gone. The good news is that there are tremendous opportunities to expand the area and the irrigation, thus a huge potential to increase food production. In this episode, we will see how small-scale farmers who adopt solar-powered water pumps and drip irrigation reduce the risk of crop failure and improve productivity. Bob, who is village chief and farmer in the southwestern corner of Kenya, was tired of unreliable rainfall and expensive diesel when he chose to invest in a portable solar pump from Future Pump. With the solar water pump, we do farming throughout the year. When it is raining, I also do farming as any other farmer is doing. During dry season, my farming is continuous. During dry season, these commodities like the kales, and other vegetables, the demand is very high and the commodity is very scarce. So the price of these commodities are very high. My income has doubled or even tripled with the existence of solar, of solar water pump. Patrick is a typical small hollow farmer in Kenya. For years, he has struggled with unreliable rainfall and failing crops. But now, life is about to take a new turn. A year ago, he invested in an irrigation system from Sun Culture, combining solar energy pump with drip irrigation. The irrigation kit has given me a lot of impact simply because I'm not looking for the weather. When the weather is dry is when I'm earning. When the rain is coming, I saw rainwater in my tank. Immediately I got solar pump. I started getting three harvests per one year. Before, I used to get just one harvest during the rainy season. Beryl is a tomato farmer. She knows only too well what a backbreaking toil manual irrigation is. With a sun-driven pump from Future Pump, she has not only spared her back, but tripled her income. I used to use manual water irrigation using water cans, the tank to the greenhouse for many trips. I use drip irrigation after the solar pump. You can uh, regulate the water and the fertilizers. You can also control the diseases by using the pesticides. My harvest has tripled after the solar pump. Access to irrigation and increased profits have motivated farmers to experiment with new plant cultures with high earnings and move from subsistence farming to commercial operation. In fact, I want to specialize with the onions, which is very rare in our area. The part of the farm which I have irrigation, I've done one acre, but I'm soon extending it to two to three acres, so that in future I could venture for more market outside. A more robust agriculture is essential to avoid famine and to lift millions of farmers and communities out of poverty. As a village chief, Bob is keen to involve farmers in the village. This will not only improve the yields of each one of the small haulers, but increase food security for the entire community. My future plan is also to involve members of the community. Already we are 30 now. We can take three farmers to buy one, so they share. In fact, one person can just carry it, and you mount it on a wheelbarrow. And if you, have, if you are energetic, you can even carry it on your head, and you go with it. Yes. <laughs> that means... We shall do farming throughout the year, and then we shall have food, food security. Now, when food security is there, other security are also taken care of. Solar technology is a win-win strategy in the fight to increase food security while slowing the growth in CO2 emissions. But it requires a major effort from both public and private actors. African farmers that are able to move away from not just costly, but environmentally destructive petrol and diesel-powered pumps by simply making the shift to a solar powered pump, they save themselves tons of money, but they're also contributing to a healthier environment and 
that helps everyone. Wendy lives in Kitonioni. She is in her last year of primary school and works hard to achieve good results so one day she can get a good job and help her parents. Her father bought a rechargeable lamp, which she charges at the solar power station in the village. The lamp gives the kids more time and better light to do homework in the evenings. Four years ago, kerosene lamps and candles were the only source of light in the village. The village literally immersed into darkness after sunset. My name is Arison Munyungu. I, I stay in Kitonyoni Market. I have two kids in his secondary schools and the three in the primary schools. While Mwende and her siblings attend school, their father takes care of the animals. He was among the first ones in the village who got rid of the kerosene lamp and bought a rechargeable lamp, which he charges at the solar plant. It provides large savings for the family, money that he can spend on his children's education. I was using his 600 per, per month on kerosene, but when they brought to the solar plant, I am using only 400 on charging the battery. There is a difference of 200 Kenya shillings. Kitonyoni is a typical village in Kenya with 3,000 inhabitants. The village is far from the nearest town and its citizens could only dream of being connected to the national grid. But then, about four years ago, an international research team brought along two large containers which would forever change everyone's life. It's actually seeing people much um, happier in their life and seeing a lot of activities within the village centre and seeing it open after dark, really major impact. The other thing is education health, really, really important. The school also received access to electricity after Energy for Development came to Kitonyoni and installed a solar-based mini-grid. We did not have electricity, we literally used to strain because the syllabus is quite big, but now we have extra time. We have a remedial teaching, which begins at six o'clock in the morning. They really come very early because we have lighting in, the, in at least three classes. Since we, uh, we began using the light, the performance has really gone up because uh, the teachers can use the lights in the morning, they can also remain evening. The teachers are also using it for uh, charging their phones. The future looks bright for kids in Kitonyoni. Soon, 600 households will get electricity, including Wanda and her family. Wanda has a clear vision for her future. Her dream is to pursue higher education and one day become a lawyer. The future generations People can be uh, well set because they will be learned. I came from another place where there was no access to electricity. Imagine using that touch in that phone to deliver. You are alone, no other source of energy, so you, it was very challenging because you could not even see what you are doing very well. Many women die of anemia or infection, lack of electricity, running water and medical supplies are some of the risk factors. Contamination of the baby is the biggest challenge because it was very difficult to hold the torch while conducting the river. When you have emergencies, especially at night, maybe you don't have a torch, you have to go and look for kerosene. It doesn't provide very good light, especially if you have somebody to suture and maybe big wounds. Health workers love their job, but without electricity, it can be very challenging to provide the help that patients need. Therefore, local clinics often refer patients to large and regional hospitals, but lack of transport also poses a significant risk factor for an expectant mother or patients who need immediate help. Some of them don't have even that money to take them to other facilities, so it's, it was really a challenging, especially when the mother comes at the later stages of pregnancy. Today, these local health clinics are among the lucky ones who have gained access to solar energy. Near Kaliro Health Clinic received a solar suitcase 
developed by WeCare Solar, which contains solar lamps, mobile charger, and a futile monitor, as well as solar panels. This has given a big boost to the service they can offer the patients. Nowadays, we can enjoy our work because we can deliver the women in a full light. Our main source of energy is solar, which we are supplied by a plant located in the marketplace. We are able to do more tests for the clients. We have even the new maternity unit. We have and hope that it will be more equipped because there is access to electricity. Now we bought uh, the solar kits from Brighter Light. They came to install the system here. We are depending on, on need for light. And also we have a refrigerator that we put um, you know, vaccines and all the other immunization for the children. It's a very nice impact because when you don't have electricity, you are afraid to give the services. So you have to refer the mother. The Nyokaliro Clinic has tripled the number of birds since they got light in the delivery room. That means Far fewer patients need to travel a bumpy road to the regional hospital in Singarema to get the treatment they need. Elizabeth came to Singarema District Hospital because the local hospital did not have electricity and adequate equipment that could be used to handle abnormal labor conditions. The baby was abnormal life, so they had to transfer me to this hospital. It's more than 50 kilometers from my village hospital to here Singarema Hospital. I came by a motorbike. I was feeling very painful because the road was very rough. If they have proper care at their level, it could reduce the the workload of the hospital and the problem also with the, the transport. Sometimes they come late and problems which they end up with babies, sometimes losing their babies. If we can get a, an electricity, all rooms of the hospital, we can start also bloody transfusion in order to avoid transporting mothers with the low hemoglobin to Sengelema. Sengelema District Hospital is a very busy hospital with up to 1,000 births a month. The hospital is linked to the national grid, but chronic power outages mean they have to use diesel generators daily, which is both polluting and expensive. My dream is that one day the the hospital will not run shortage of electricity so that mothers can deliver without darkness.